In the previous video, I calculated the work along a closed path for three different forces. So I did this gravitational force, negative mg in the y direction, constant in the y direction, and then I did this one, c x x hat minus b y hat, and then I did this other one, negative c y hat y x hat plus c x y hat. And what we found in just the paths that we chose, I, I did this rectangular path. Uh, in this case, for the gravitational force, the work done along the closed path was zero. For this one, the work done along the closed path was zero, but it wasn't for this one. And, you know, the question is, is the work always done independent of path, right? Because if, it's, if the work done along a closed path is equal to zero, then it doesn't depend on the path because we can always pick. Uh, suppose I have two points here, point one and point two, and if I go this way, and then I go this way, and the work done along, let's call this path A and B, work A plus work B is equal to zero, then it, if I do that for all possible paths, then it doesn't matter what path I take to go from A to B, I can always just do the other one, right? So I could always just do a straight line path. And that's important because it allows us to, one, pick the best path. If, if it doesn't depend on the path, pick the best path. Also, it allows us to turn that force, the work done by that force, into a potential energy. And we'll talk about that later. But really want to see what can we do to test if the work done is path independent. Because even in this case where we got a work with zero along the path, maybe some other path, the work is not zero. So we, we don't know how to test every single path. And, and I'm going to come back to these and check, but let's just consider, what we want to do is to consider an infinitely small square path. And I'm going to show you how to do this in two dimensions, and then we'll generalize that to three dimensions. Okay. So, suppose I have some force, F, has some x component, x hat, plus a y component, y hat. It's a generic force. And so this changes with x and y. This changes with x and y. It could. I don't know. It could. Okay. It could change. Uh, and I'm going to integrate along this path. I'm going to start here at x0, y0. I'm going to go over here, a distance delta x. And then I'm going to go up here, a distance delta y. And then I'm going to go over here, a distance delta x in the negative x direction. And then I'm going to come back to here. So I'm going to make a square path delta y. And if, if I take the limit as delta y goes to 0, then it's like saying I don't even care where it is. And I haven't, put, I haven't actually specified x0 and y0. So we can make a test to see if that work along that generic path is equal to 0. That's what we're going to do. Okay, so here we're going to have like that. So we have four paths. Uh, let's call this work one. Let's just do work one. I want to calculate the work done by that force along that path. Now, if delta x is tiny, okay, then I can actually uh, use the xy coordinate of the middle of the path as my force and then just do f dot delta x. And that's what I'm going to do. So the work along that first path is going to be this force. Okay, uh, and I'm just going to write it as f dot delta x. But, on this, so, but since I'm moving in, this is actually delta r. But since my displacement's in the x direction in an amount delta r, delta x, the only thing that's going to survive is the x component of that force, right? So this is going to be equal to fx delta x. So let's put in our expression for f of x in, at that coordinate right there. So work one is going to be equal to the force at this position. So what does that position be? It's going to be the fx component. The x value is going to be x0 plus delta x over 2. And then the y component is just going to be y0. And then I have delta x. So that's the work done along that first path. Does that make sense? Okay, now let's do the next path work done along path 2, that's path 2 right there, it's going to be equal to now moving in the y direction. So the only component that survives when I take the dot product is my y component of the force. So it's going to be Fy, and I'm going to put in this 
uh, coordinate value right there. That's going to be uh, x0 plus delta x for the x value, x0 plus delta x for the x value, and then the y value is going to be y0 plus delta y over 2, and then I have delta y. I should have done this in a different way. That's fine. Now I'm going to go up here. One thing that I have to worry about is my delta r is going to be in the negative delta x direction. So I need to make sure that this work is going to be negative. I'm going to put in my force value right there. So it's going to be work three. It's going to be, and I'm only dealing with the x component, and it's negative, negative fx. And my x value is going to be x0 plus delta x over 2. It's in the middle. x0 plus delta x over 2. And then my y value is going to be y0 plus delta y, because it's y0 plus delta y. y0 plus delta y. And you have to say it, otherwise it doesn't work. And I was running out of room over there, that's why it's squished. OK. Now let's do the last one, work 4. Now I'm only moving in the y direction, so the only force that matters is the y component. It's going to be negative, negative f, that's an x. F. I'm, I'm bad with my x's and y's. So the x coordinate right here is going to be x0. And the y coordinate is going to be y0 plus delta y over 2, delta y. And so now the total work is just going to be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. I have to add them all up. And I, I, I poorly manage my space, very poorly manage my space. Um, but let's just group these together. Let's group these, uh, the ones that have the delta x and the ones that have the delta y. And I guess I'm just going to erase this and see if I can squish it in up here. I don't want to erase those because I need them. Okay. So let's say the work is going to be, I'm going to do the delta x's first. So I have this f x x0 plus delta x over 2 y0 that's that and then the other delta x is that one over there minus fx x0 plus delta x over 2 y0 plus delta y delta x I made a mess of that whole thing didn't I that's a mess of a thing. Okay, let's just, I'm going to have to just erase. Let's just, I'm going to put this down here. Uh, w3, f, can you see that? Yeah. Why didn't I go there in the first place? Negative fx, x0 plus delta x over 2, uh, y0 plus delta y, delta x. So I can erase that one now. Okay, and then we'll put the, we'll put the next one. Okay, so now we can do it again. W is going to be, uh, I'm going to put the delta x right here so I don't forget. This, fx, x0 plus delta x over 2, y0. And then I had the other one down here, this one, minus fx of x0 plus delta x over 2, y0. And that's all times delta x. Okay, we're doing okay now. Now I can say plus delta y, the delta y terms are going to be this one, which is going to be f y x0 plus delta x, y0 plus delta y over 2. And now I can, look, I can just add that in there. Look at that. I'm going to move it over minus f y to y, x0 y0 plus delta y over 2. Now, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by delta x, delta y. So over here, I get the work over delta x, delta y. And remember, I want the work to be 0. I want, I want to see if the work is 0. And so I'm dividing by an infinitely small number of 0, too. So it's 0 divided by 0. So it's going to be OK. I know it's a bad thing to do, but it's going to be OK. Uh, so that means that this, I, I divide by delta x, delta y. So this whole thing over delta y 
and this whole thing over delta x. But what we have now is something amazing because in the limit that delta y goes to zero, look what's happening up here. I have fx and the, I have y zero minus, that should be plus delta y. You guys didn't catch me that, catch that before. And then over here, I have fy delta x. I have x zero plus delta x, x zero. So this is the function minus the function plus delta x divided by, I mean delta y divided by delta y. Here's the function plus delta x divided by delta x. These are our partial derivatives. These are partial derivatives. So this says work over delta x delta y is going to be the partial of fx with respect to y minus, oh, this one's going to be, this is y0 plus, and this is this this one's minus. This if I can switch these orders, this one's going to be yeah. Switch these orders. So minus the partial of f y with respect to x. So this is my test. If the partial of f x respect to y minus the partial of f y respect to x is equal to zero, then it's a cons then the path doesn't matter. Okay. Let's test this for the three equations that we have up here for the three forces that we have. So let's try it with that first force, F1. F1 is negative mgy. Okay, so partial of Fx with respect to y is zero. There's no y x component. There's no dependence on x in this, uh, in this y component. The partial of Fy with respect to x is, I'm sorry, part, there's no y, there's no x component, period. And over here, there's no x component in the y. So that's 0, too. So the, this case, I get 0 minus 0 is equal to 0. So that one's a conservative force. You knew. You knew that was conservative. You already knew that. So don't, don't pretend like you didn't know. Okay, now let's do this one. Cx hat minus by. So f is going to be equal to c x x hat minus b y hat. So the partial of f x with respect to y is going to be, this is f x. If I take the partial of that with respect to y, I get zero. The partial of f y with respect to x, there's no x in that term, so that's zero. So I get zero minus zero. It's zero. Finally, let's do this last one. F3 is negative CY X hat plus CX Y hat. So the partial of FX with respect to Y is going to be equal to, I can do this one now, it's going to be negative C, right? The partial of FY with respect to X is going to be C. So now negative C minus C is not equal to zero. That's not a conservative force, which we knew. We did, once you find one path that's not, one closed loop work that's not equal to zero, then they are, they, none of them, it doesn't really matter. They have to all be zero in order to be conservative. Okay, so let's take a moment and just come up with a different definition because there's, this is the two dimensional check for conservative forces. There's a three-dimensional check in Cartesian coordinates called the curl. So if we define the del operator, I call it that, as the partial in Cartesian coordinates, the partial with respect to x, x hat, plus the partial with respect to y, y hat, plus the partial with respect to z, z hat. Then a force is conservative if the magnitude of the, par of the curl, which is del cross f, is equal to zero. If that's true, then it's a conservative force. Okay, now how do you do the cross product with an operator and a vector? So again, we have the vector f. It's going to be fx x hat plus fy y hat plus fz z hat. So if we take the cross product, I always like to write it as a matrix. Okay. So I can say, let's just do the cross product of del cross f 
as the determinant of x hat, y hat, z hat, uh, the partial with respect to x, the partial with respect to y, the partial with respect to z, fx, fy, fz. So let's write this out. Do I have room down below? I think I'm, I'm going to write it up there. Okay. So the curl in Cartesian coordinates is going to be del cross f. And we can take the determinant of this matrix by expanding about that first row. So I'm going to take this x hat component, and then I'm going to take the determinant of this smaller matrix, which is going to be this operating on that. So I get uh, the partial of fz with respect to y minus the partial of f uh, y with respect to z x hat. And then I can do expand about this row right here. Now, so the Jacobian for this is minus one minus is minus one, right? Uh, because it's because of its location. So I have to include the minus sign in there. But I can write that as plus. I can just do it backwards. The partial of am I off script? Let's put this down a little bit. The partial of fx with respect to z minus the partial of fz with respect to x, y hat. And then finally, I'm going to expand about that. So I get the partial, the partial of fy with respect to x minus the partial of fx with respect to y, z hat. Okay, so that's a vector, right? The curl, the cross product gives us a vector answer. And so in order to have a conservative force, the magnitude of this would have to be zero. And the only way for that to happen is for that to be zero, that to be zero, and that to be zero. And you'll notice if I take just these two, um, that's what we had before. That is the x and y components, okay? So we, you can either say that the zero vector or the magnitude zero, and that's how you can test for a conservative force. Now, once you have a conservative force, like gravity, like the force due to a spring, then you can write that as a potential energy, and we'll do that later, but that's how you test for that.